after children, especially boys. But it appears to be the case that most such men are not gay, that their uh, attraction is for young, defenseless children, especially boys, because they're more exotic and more forbidden. But uh, it is not a matter of uh, gay rights as advocated by practically anybody. This is a, a much different sort of phenomenon. The reason that the gay community usually scorns any investigation of the subject is that they know that the average person in the public will blame homosexuals and homosexuality for the phenomenon, regardless of what facts are presented. Well, this is not just a sexual thing in the way we talk about it. It's a, a power trip, and it's also uh, a sadistic thing because these kids are tortured and killed. The kind of individuals involved are down the line, almost in every instance in the cases I've investigated, men who are very powerful, usually very wealthy, and usually administrate control over a large number of people. Wealthy Houstonians can and do obtain boys in a most discreet manner. It's gotten a little more sophisticated now. It's gotten more, uh, uh, it's gotten more expensive. Prices, higher prices are paid. Uh, and it's, it's gotten a little more sophisticated in terms of, um, oh, I think the types of people who are, who are into it, types of adults who are into it, professional people. Uh, Houston professional uh, people? Yeah, yeah. Soliciting boys? Oh, sure. You know, I mean, you can be a millionaire in Houston, man. Professional? <laughs> yeah. You got people here that are so wealthy that they can't let anybody know what they're doing that they're willing to pay two, three, four hundred dollars a night, you know, for one of these boys not to say anything about them, you know. You got judges, doctors, lawyers, politicians, uh, advertising people involved in in buying young people. For, if it's for an hour, or for a night, or for a month, or for a year, they actually have white slavery in this country. It's a fact. In, the, in Houston, right now, it's going on. Tom, is there any uh, evidence that there's any connection with organized crime? Obviously, with other forms of prostitution that we know about. There are close connections. The Mafia has always utilized prostitution as one of the pillars of its organizations and sources of its income. Is there any connection here that has been revealed uh, with organized crime? Yes. When we're talking about 400 kids on the street between 2 and 4 in the morning in a city like Houston, there's very little organization. There may be a runner or a pimp who's trying to squeeze the boys a little, but there's no big businessman running a sophisticated operation. But when there is a bookstore with 40 stalls, uh, there's often a stable of boys. That's, that's fairly good-sized business. And there's bigger business than that. That's the call boy operations, like this one we described with the 10,000 customers. That's big business. It's crime. It's organized, but it's not the mafia. It's the pillars of our society. Uh, there is big business, mm. organized crime. It's sophisticated. It's closely attached to the major financial, commercial, industrial, educational institutions of our society. It's run by the same people who run those. It's frequented by the same people who occupy management positions in those. It's not the mafia. It's... It's an adjunct of clean business. It's serving the most respectable people we have in our society, the people who uh, are the elite. I assume you can't name names at this particular time, but... Not if people haven't been apprehended yet. Right, okay. Are senators involved? U U.S. senators? Well, and let, congressmen, let me, do you suppose? Let me give you some information here. Now, this is stuff that has come out of newspaper clippings. It has gotten far enough to get in the newspaper, even if it hasn't been followed up. This was potentially the biggest case of all. That the one in New Orleans? Yes. A New Orleans Boy Scout troop was busted for actually being a call boy ring of boy prostitutes. The man who was the leader of the Boy Scout troop was given 75 years in prison, and then he offered to tell a story. 
The story he told was that the congressional delegations from two states, one of which was Louisiana and one of which bordered Louisiana, and, as he put it, the entire hierarchy of one of the states, as far as top political posts, were all involved as customers of the little boys. And he said he was willing to name all the names. Uh, that was a UPI story of 26 November 1979, and he never talked again. Is he, he in said, jail now? Is he in he's prison? still in jail. He said there was one U.S. senator and many congressmen. Weren't there a couple, uh, actually, right-wing, uh, new right um, representatives, congressmen in Washington, Bauman. who were actually... Um, well, found guilty of molesting. <laughs> Doug, I wish you were right. Mm -hmm. uh, Congressman Robert Bauman mm -hmm. was apprehended in February of 1980, mm -hmm. having sex with a 16-year-old boy. For some reason, no charges were brought until September 1980. At that point, the FBI and the U.S. Attorney made an agreement to keep all details of the account out of public records, the charges were dropped on Bauman's promise that he would take a drug or an alcoholic abuse treatment program. He continued in office and he ran for re-election. He was defeated, but he said he would go on to run again. William F. Buckley is one of his closest friends. They were co-founders of Young Americans for Freedom and the American Conservative Union. The way Buckley put it was this. It transpires that during alcoholic bouts, he engages in homosexual acts. He went on to say there was a complaint filed by a 16-year-old boy. And then he went on to say Bauman should resign from Congress and resign from the positions in conservative organizations because he was an embarrassment. <laughs> Bauman never went to trial. He didn't actually go to a formal pretrial hearing either. Then there was a Texas Congressman Wyatt who was caught... Uh, well, actually, I, I take it back. He was not caught. A, a juvenile reported that why did it force sex on him? Charges were never filed. That's a quote. Charges were never filed, despite the fact that the boy had filed a complaint. And Wyatt said he was going to run again uh, when it was published in the Austin paper that uh, the complaint was not that he was drunk driving, but that he had forced sex on a juvenile male. He said he wouldn't run again. He was already in the alcohol rehabilitation program, so there was no trial, no pretrial hearing, no charges. Wasn't there another, another uh, uh, ring of... Uh tour guides, boys as tour guides for congressmen? Well, that you may be referring to the case of Representative Hinson, a Republican from Mississippi, who was found having sex with uh, somebody in the men's room of the Longworth House office building. Uh, there are conflicting accounts. Uh, according to one account, he was having sex with a minor. According to another account, he was having sex with an adult. He uh, said he was innocent and he agreed to undergo alcohol abuse treatment, and he was not charged. This, well, there, there were some the ring, charges were dropped. Well, what was the story about the about the young boys being tour guides for the Capitol? And this was also part of uh, a little boy sex ring, and uh, also uh, some of it resulted in campaign contributions. I read that in an article. That has to do with the state of Texas, as a matter of oh, fact. Texas. And uh, here's the way we can tell that story. <laughs> this is one you can't tell. <laughs> well, this is one we can't. It I got into I, the newspaper. Yeah, I saw it in the newspaper. But then it disappeared. Oh. What appeared in the newspaper was a boy's home run by a Texas state representative was being investigated for charge of abuse of the boys. The state representative said that there was no abuse. He claimed that his his place could not be investigated by the state because it was uh, private, like that of uh, Lester Roloff. Rev Reverend Roloff. The story died and didn't appear in the press anymore. Uh, the lead that uh, produced the initial story was that that representative took con campaign contributions and then the uh, contributors, as a reward, got to have sex with the boys in the home and that he did this for more than himself, but for other representatives 
That man is out of the state legislature. So we've talked about legislators, congressmen. S a senator. Senators. Um, people in the the highest ranks of uh, government at the local at the uh, state level now are these just aberrations or is this part of a widespread ongoing thing i think it's very widespread uh, and not just among powerful politicians we've talked about politicians but it seems to be the case that in all high-powered professions uh, Corporations, now we're talking about too. Corporations, uh, medicine, law, even the university, not necessarily professions with uh, bloated salaries, but prestige, some power, influence, and above all, pressure. The men involved are susceptible to this kind of deviation. I'm working right now, you know, like just, you know, with the corporation. And What's that? How's that work? Well, uh, when their executives or you know their business people are in town, uh, they're sent to our apartment, and we entertain them while they're here. Okay. What's that entertainment usually involve? What do they usually demand, or what do they want? Well, it's all kinds of sex and perversions. There's no two alike. I've decided that. Everyone's in for something different, so I can't really stereotype the whole. You know, All the men want different things? Yeah, right. But we're usually in the passive side, and they're usually the dominant player. What does he do at Grady Hospital? He's a, um, one of those that um, operates on people. He's a what? Uh, a doctor. Uh, we've talked about those men who have achieved power, and also among those men who wanted it but didn't get it. Mm -hmm. Men like poor Gacy in Chicago who killed at least 33 boys. He was not a well-to-do man, but he was a joiner. He paid high dues to join men's clubs. He paid a thousand dollars to join the president's club so he could uh, have dinner with Jimmy Carter. Instead, he had dinner with Mrs. Carter and had his picture taken with her. He was uh, an upward striver. He killed at least 33 boys. He offered in his defense that he could not identify any of the 33 boys by face or by name because he had had sex with 1,500 different boys in the previous five years, 300 different kids a year, and most of them, as he said, were prostitutes. He didn't snatch them off the street. He went out and bought their services, and then he coerced them, as this lawyer in Washington says no one ever does. He made them captives, and he killed them. What about women in the positions of power in government? You don't find women involved in this? Well, you don't find many women involved in positions of power in the uh, American. Yeah, maybe that system. explains the what appears to be the fact: women don't do this to little girls. Heterosexual women, homosexual women, don't do this to little girls or little boys or little boys. I mean, it happens, but it's not common. It's not ordinary. It's not a phenomenon. It isn't a threat. Uh, if you have a little girl and you have an adult female friend, you needn't have any apprehension. But if you have little kids who are boys, they are in more danger than the little girls today. Why, why do you think uh, there's so much violence uh, caught up in this? Investigations in other cities have shown that boys, 13, 14, even younger, are coerced into prostitution with threats of physical violence and are sometimes shipped across state lines, shipped to the older adult men who desire young boys for sexual acts. Occasionally, these boys' episodes with their older clients ends in physical violence. There are men who seek young boys to torture and sometimes to kill. This phenomenon is not unique to America. Uh, it may not even be unique to advanced industrial urban societies. In the other places where it occurs, though, it doesn't seem to be attended by a high level of 
mayhemic violence. And in, in the United States, it is. In Islamic countries, for instance, uh, prostitution with boys is a standard. I've been in Morocco and Algeria and observed this, and yet I've never heard any stories of violence being involved. In other words, it's an erotic phenomenon as opposed to this power or psychological um, well, there are those who would have us believe that that is the case in America. Uh, here, for instance, is an article written by a law professor in Washington, D.C., who was general counsel to the Metropolitan Police Department. This article was written in 1981. He says,